All right, these are some good talking points right here, guys. So today it's just an open mastermind. Um, everyone went into the chat and dropped down a couple hurdles that they put in. Um, any challenges they're facing right now, any hurdles that they have, challenges that they're facing. And we're just going to brainstorm together, guys, and kind of go through, uh, go down the list and see what we can come up with. But it's good to... Um, it's good to check in guys. And sometimes just because everyone's in a different spot, right? Everyone has different things that they're dealing with. And some people may have dealt with certain things at different times. Um, some people may be able to help somebody else. Some people may have gone through the same struggle. So being able to openly talk and mastermind and figure out, you know, what sort of challenges that we're having is really going to help us solve the problem, get some ideas, get some inspiration and push it forward. So let's go down the list guys. So I want to pull up I'm just going to pick some of these. Uh, so Andre, you wrote down following up with potential clients, getting people excited with the search. So can you go ahead and unmute yourself, bro, and, and tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, I mean, it seems like I, I, I'm able to reach out to people usually. Uh, the few people who actually want to just go see places, it's like they already seem like motivated and excited themselves. Um, but certain people that, you know, we're getting into, they're very hesitant sometimes. And so kind of inspiring them to like, see that it's just like to see what is available see what they could get for like what they're looking for sometimes some of them aren't aren't as uh, enthused or motivated so like how do i like i like my thing is like there's certain clients that i feel like i've been trying to figure different ways that maybe just providing them a list of places like here we can go check this out this day you know sometimes it might be better than just you know waiting for them to be full gung-ho about putting in seeing this thing that's already available now to go do i'm, I'm just trying to figure out strategies okay so what I'm hearing, just to, so I'm so we're clear, is that you have some clients that you're working with, or some clients that, but you don't, they don't seem excited, they don't seem motivated. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, correct. And are these clients that you've already? Maybe let's focus on one. So give me one client that you're talking about. Uh, I mean, right now there's one guy that I'm, I'm we're talking to. Um, you know, he seems like he wants to search everything like that. Um, but, you know, taking his time, he doesn't seem like he's, it's something he's like in a rush to do, which is fine. You know, it's not like it has to like happen overnight, but, uh, you know, just getting him to be a lot more receptive and responsive. He still responds. It just, it's, you know, it's the patience that I've been applying rather okay. than like, I feel like, but that being said, like, maybe I just got to put something in front of him. That's like, so he, like, I do that, take all that like thought and work out for him and just like get him into the places and checking it out. So he gets more interested. You know? Okay. So let me ask you what, what's, what's this guy's first name? uh Sharesh. we just uh, me and rudy have been working with him i was waiting for rudy to reach out to him so i can i can like begin that kind of search with him so Sharesh. okay so Sharesh. so have you so this we're troubleshooting right to try to figure out what the root of the problem we got to troubleshoot so, so i'm going to ask you a few questions to understand have you met with this client already uh yeah we did one of the consultations um, you did a buyer and, consultation yeah it was just this last last friday okay but, who uh who did the buyer consult with you uh, it was Rudy and myself, and then it was supposed to be, I think, Anna, but she was uh, had a doctor's appointment, unfortunately, at the time. So okay, so so you did the buyer consult on your own? Uh, we did, I didn't I don't really have really sat through one myself uh, in its entirety, so I, I didn't know how to do it. So I just kind of just talked with them and then established a list that I pre-created of like possible places that we can go check out that are in his range. Um, and I sent him over to him so he can just look him over and see if any of them does spark his interest. Okay. Uh, okay, so there was no formal buyer consultation, um, and you called this guy. How'd you book this appointment, or how'd you meet this guy? Uh, he was an ex Zillow Flex guy. Okay, so you called him from Zillow Flex, booked the time to chat with him. You jumped on a Zoom with him and Rudy. Yeah, and then and, and Rudy, they, they talked, and he seems pretty stoked on it. Um, Rudy was like following up with him now, but sent him over a uh, application just to kind of get ready on the loan side, and he seemed like he like really was into it. So. Hopefully things continue, but I was going to reach out to him later today after we had the chance to reach out. Got it. Got it. And okay. So this is good stuff, guys. I mean, this, these are, these are things we got to work through. So number one is if you don't, if you haven't done a full buyer consult with someone, it's going to be very difficult for you to assess where they're at, how motivated they are and stuff like that. Right. So before going out and seeing homes, especially if this was an old Zillow flex and you're kind of calling him, trying to, trying to re-engage the client you need to have a conversation where you're doing a sort of buyer consult where you're asking him certain questions. Now, 
How did you go through like the LP mama script, like figuring out what location is motivation, price point, all that stuff like that? Yeah. That's why I generated a list of some homes that I think were like something he would look, look into and what he liked. And so okay. we're still, I'm still trying to identify more of like the small details that he likes, but that comes up, I'm sure with time of him, just meet him talking more. So, okay. And um, when you asked him about his motivation, how soon does he want to go buy a home? Did you ask that question? Like, Hey, how soon do you want to make a move? Yeah, no, it seemed like he wanted to do it within the next month or so. So it seems like something he him and his wife has been renting a long time here in Silicon Valley and they make good money. So like they're looking to just get into a home. Um, okay. So, an so let, oh, I want to stop you right there. Right. We, we want to go into detail. So did it seem, or did he say, we want to oh, buy said, like, he said you, that he you say Andre, I want to buy a home within the next month or it no, it wasn't it wasn't like he wasn't that much he was pretty much saying that like he wants to start searching now and he wants to really start seeing like you know what is available right now and if it's a, if it's something he wants to do. But it seemed like he, like from everything like with the details on the loan side and everything else, like he seemed motivated. And it seemed like he told me details in the sense that he was looking for within about a month or two. I think if he could find it sooner, you know, I'm sure he would be up for it. It sounded like it and from what he told me. Um, so. Okay, cool. All right, let's stop right there. So let me give you guys some coaching on this because some of you guys are going to run into the same issue. So number one, when you're trying to rehash an old client, right, you got to understand that there might have been when they initially inquired, there was probably a higher level of motivation at that point, which is why they clicked and said, hey, let me, uh, you know, contact me. Hey, this is a property I want to look at. So anytime you're following up, you need to ask questions about that. Hey, when I talk, when we talked to you last, you inquired on this property, you know, is that still the plan? You know, what would you like to do? You got to run through that LP mama script, right? How soon are you looking to buy a home? Are you currently renting right now? Um, what location? You need to find out all those details and you're going to always want to prompt them to do some sort of buyer consultation, right? Hey, here's what I recommend. Let's jump on a zoom. We'll quickly go through the buying process. We'll update you on the market. We'll talk about the financing. And once you do that in that order, at the end, you should come to some sort of conclusion, right? On what the next steps are. If the next steps are going out and looking at homes or going, or maybe he needs to get pre-approved first, right? But there should be, you should be pushing it forward to some sort of next step, right? So what it sounds like, uh, being that you're newer, um, Andre, it sounds like maybe there was kind of a, the order wasn't followed correctly, right? You were supposed to do a consult, Anna couldn't make it. So I think you really need to get this guy back on the consult, right? You need to reschedule him for a consult. Um, if it's with Anna or if Anna's not available, then you need to find a, pick another senior agent who is available that can take the lead on that conversation. Right. You want to say, I would call him and say, hey, Shiresh, if that's his name, Shiresh. Hey, sounds like you spoke to Rudy. It sounds like, uh, you know, we're getting some moving forward on, you know, getting you pre-approved. But I would really like to do a, uh, a quick consult with you where we can go over the process of buying a home. I can update you on the market and we can really identify what your criteria is and make sure that we're able to do it in the time frame that you want. So do you have some time today or tomorrow? book a consult with him, right? Because you have to go through that consult because during that consult, he's going to see our value of why, why they should work with us. Right now, he doesn't know you. You're just some guy who followed up on a lead, right? You haven't probably demonstrated enough value to him yet for him to fully trust you and want to go out there and see homes with you. So it's not that maybe he's not motivated. If he, was, if he wasn't motivated, he wouldn't have gotten on the phone with you or gone on the initial console in the first place, it could be that he doesn't fully trust you yet because you haven't built up enough, built up enough credibility. So there's a reason why we do it in that order, right? There's a reason why we push for the console. The console is going to, is going to show him the credibility that they're looking for. And then at that point, you'll have permission to say, Hey, let's go see some homes. But it's kind of like this, uh, the analogy I'm going to give you, like, if, if you try to ask like a girl on a date or something, I'm going to just relate it to this, right? You try to ask a girl on a date, but you never got to know her. She never got to know you. She doesn't know what you're like. And you're just saying, hey, let's go on a date. And you haven't established, you know, what a nice guy you are. They're going to be reluctant, right? To move forward with, with that, right? But if you've got a chance to talk and kind of go through all these different things and display your value, 
then your chances of moving forward with going on a date or something is going to be a lot higher, right? So if there's no value that was established or like not a big enough value, then no one's just going to want to jump, you know, go meet a stranger to go look at houses, right? Unless they truly know that you're qualified and, and you're able to handle it. So you got to go back to book that consult, make sure there's a senior agent, make sure it's done the right way. All right. All right. Um, top two struggles. Kayla, um, are you there? If you want to unmute yourself. Kayla, I work, uh, top two struggles are working with sellers and how to confidently communicate with them over the phone. Can you tell me about that more? Unmute yourself and tell me more about that. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. So when I see um, like Z-Birth for sellers and I try giving them a call, I'm not as confident. So I don't really know what to exactly ask. Okay. To set the okay. So Kayla, you're, you're newer in the biz, right? How long have you been in the biz? Uh, seven months. Okay. Have you had any transactions yet? With buyers. With buyers. Okay. Um, how many transactions so far with buyers? Um, one transaction, but I've submitted multiple offers with buyers. Okay. So I do want to just give you some coaching is if I were you being where you're at, I would not be talking to sellers at all yet. Okay. I would strictly focus on, on buyers right now mm -hmm. because with buyers, the, it's a lot easier to talk to buyers and yeah. that's going to allow you to build some, um, some experience and some confidence. Okay. And once you've gotten a few buyers that you've worked what you've worked on yeah. successfully from start mm -hmm. to finish, then at that point, um, I think you can start yeah. gathering into trying to add some sellers into the mix. Because with sellers, it's a whole okay. different, it's a whole different skill set and you know, just different things that you got to do. But working with buyers will make you more confident in working with sellers. Okay. And that's why that's why we typically start off. Mm -hmm. our agents working with buyers strictly because it's something where we have an abundance of buyer leads. You can keep calling them. You can build those skills. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to submit offers. All that knowledge of submitting offers will translate over to sellers. So okay, I want to um, just first give you some coaching there. Mm -hmm. uh, don't call Z buyers. Don't call anything like that. Just strictly call any buyer leads that we have in the pond, if that's what you're doing okay. and focus on those ones. Okay. okay. Got it. And Thank just you. get really, really good at doing that, right? Okay. Repetition over and over. Get really good at the script, really good at booking the appointment, learning how to show homes, uh, learning how to submit offers, learning how to run comps for a buyer, all those different things. I would start there, okay. master that, and then later on add sellers. Okay. Thank you. All right. No problem. Um, okay. Juan, finding the right home for the client. Give me uh, some context, bro. Give me. Yeah, so it's like, um, I guess it's like he's looking for something specific. So it's like, at least for my client, he was going, hey, I want something where I can live in it, but also rent out parts, like part of the home. A uh, couple of entrances, like specific entrances or multiple entrances to the home and in a specific city. So it's been a little bit more difficult. I actually got a text message earlier this uh, today, though. He's like, actually looking for something different. Or probably if we can't get that, you know, look at a uh, gated community or something like that. So I think they just kind of see what pick your brain. All right, what, what is it? If he's very picky on the home, how can I say, hey, or like maybe steer the conversation. If I can't find you this, uh, what else? Or what's like a backup? Or what is it that you would be looking for? Got it. So um, who's working with you on this one? Uh, Anna. Okay. Um, so what I would do, what I would do is um, I would really try to narrow down what the person is looking for. I would maybe, I would have a conversation with them and say, Hey, look, you know, we want to make sure we service you as best as possible. We want to make sure we're focused on what we're looking for. It sounds like there's a few different ideas um, that you guys have, you, you know, if they have a couple different ideas, it's going to be hard to have like these multiple searches going. I mean, you can theoretically, right? You can set them up on three different searches in Firepoint for specific properties, but it's like chasing three different squirrels, right? Like it's going to be hard to put your time and energy. So I think a good exercise would be to really meet with the client and 
go a little deeper on what they want, why they want it, why it's important to them. If they could only choose one of those types of homes, you know, which one would it be? If they, if they only had to choose one and narrow it down to, to what it is that they really, really want. Then from there, you can put all your energy into searching, right? Searching what's on the MLS. If there's nothing on the MLS like that, maybe even uh, door knocking, you can send out mailers. We've done that in the past. So like, let's say a client is looking for a specific home. There's nothing on the MLS, but we know a neighborhood where there's homes like that. We have a template if you get with one of the senior agents where you can type it up and say, hey, my name's Juan. I have a client. He's looking for something like this. If you've ever thought of selling your home, please give me a call. You can go drop that off. You can send it in the mail. Dropping it off and leaving it like on their doorstep is probably going to be the most effective because that's for sure they're going to open it up. Um, but that's when you're trying to find a really, really specific type of home. You got to do a little bit more legwork because oftentimes those of the, those homes are not uh, fully available, right? Gotcha. Um, the other thing too is searching for homes that were off market. So maybe they were, you can go on the MLS and you can look back to see if there was any homes that were on the market that they took off or they canceled or expired or they withdrew them from the market. Um, that can open up uh, some more leads there because there may be a seller that was trying to sell their home. Nobody bought it. So they took it off the market. But if you were to contact them, they might still be interested in selling. Gotcha. Right? So, so step one, narrow down the search, right? Like if the client is all over the place, it's your job as the leader, right? You and the senior agent to get them back on track and to really say, okay, if you could only choose one, let's focus on one thing first. If that doesn't work, then we can move to plan B. Which one would it be? What would be your most ideal home? And then you go from there. Okay. Sounds good. Appreciate it. All right. Because sometimes, sometimes the client's dumb. Sometimes they don't know what it is they want to, right? They're like, they're trying to figure it out as they go. And that's where the agent has to do a good job of leading them down the right path, right? And not being afraid to uh, challenge the client, like, you know, say, hey, I don't know if that's the best, based off what you told me, I don't know if that's the best approach, right? You don't, you don't want to just do whatever the client says. You want to take what they're looking for, figure it out. And then you want to give them advice on the best way to approach that, right? That's being a consultant, not just someone where the client is just telling you all the things they want, right? Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, is that helpful? Yeah, for sure. Any other questions on that while we're on that topic, Clint? No, thank you. Give me a good game plan. All right, for sure, for sure. All right, let's go. Um, Chris, you're next, brother. Unmute yourself. Tonality and follow up. Tell me a little bit more. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Uh, with tonality, um, Rob and Jason been telling me uh, I sound kind of monotone on the phone. So okay. I, was, I was thinking maybe just give them a little bit more practice. Uh, maybe add a, like this. Um, Rob mentioned like an upswing with my tone. So if I'm calling clients, like, hey, hey, is this Enrique? Like, yeah. Trying to change the tone, um, thought about changing, uh, you know, like the pace of how I speak and, um, you know, just trying to figure out other ways that I can, I can work on my tonality. Okay. Um, do you naturally feel like you're more quiet and monotone naturally? Naturally. Yeah, I, I would say so. Okay. So one thing I would recommend if like, if anybody else struggles with this, naturally you're a quiet person, then figure out what things physically are going to make you talk louder, right? Standing up is always going to make you speak louder because when you're standing up, you're just, you know, you're in a, a position of more power, right? You're open, you're open chested, right? Put your chest out, stand up. If you have headphones on, it's great because now you can have your hands free. So you can move your hands as if you were talking to someone in person, right? So you got to make sure that you're incorporating body language because if you're just on the phone and you're kind of like this, and you're just calling, you're not getting a chance to use your body language, which your body language is gonna change. It's gonna change how the call sounds on the other end. It's gonna give you more tonality. It's gonna give you more energy and stuff like that, right? So that's just one thing right off the bat is Chris and anybody else that struggles with this, on your next call session, make uh, get the chair out of the way. 
move your chair and just stand up the whole entire time, right? If you got to put your uh, put put your laptop on something higher or whatever it might be, try that out. You know, for for try it for one hour, right? One hour or half an hour of your calls and see what difference that makes, right? Of just talking freely with your headset on, with your hands able to move freely and chest out and see if that makes a difference. Um, the other thing is to remember, we're always gonna do what we normally do unless there's a cue, a mental cue or a visual cue or something that reminds us to do something different. So if you know that you're naturally more quiet or monotone, then you might need to put yourself a reminder somewhere, maybe a post-it note on your laptop so that every time you open your laptop, it says right there, more energy, more tonality, stand up, don't be so quiet, right? Like some sort of reminder, a visual cue that's going to give you some, that's going to, uh, you know, remind you of what to do. Maybe set up some sort of ritual, like before you jump on calls, maybe have like a little note in your phone. I use my note section a lot and it's like my five minute uh, call ritual, right? And you could write down maybe some bullet points of things that you need to do that are going to get you in the best mood, the best energy. For me, like if I put some dope music on, like that gets me hyped up. If I listen to something inspirational, like a podcast or YouTube or something that gets me hyped up. If I stand up, it gets me hyped up. Um, before I do our team meetings in the car, before I walk into the office, I take a five minute break to just kind of mentally prepare myself to say, all right, it's time for the meeting. I got to bring some energy. I look through my notes. All right, this is what we're doing. I come in and then I got to deliver, right? So it's the same thing. It's like a performance, right? Like imagine like the football players before they go out, you know, into the game, Chris, what do they do before within well, the locker room before they're about to run out to the game? What are they doing? They get locked in. They hype themselves up. Exactly. What are they, what, what sort of things do they do to hype themselves up? Um, as a team, they probably like huddle together. Maybe play some music. How about movement? How about physical? What do they do physically? They like jump around. Jump around, right? Get mm -hmm. warmed up. Do 10 jumping jacks. Get your heart rate going, right? Like there's, there's a reason they do that, right? Because physically when you, when you want to get pumped up, standing up and jumping around and playing music and maybe doing some jumping jacks or stretching or moving your arms and getting the blood flowing, that's going to create energy, right? That's going to get your heart rate going. So remember guys, like energy plays a big role when you're talking to people, when you're meeting with people, when you're on a buyer consultation, even like on a Zoom right now, because you guys are through the screen, you guys can't see me, right? So it's a little bit different. So I need to make sure that mentally I turn up the energy a little bit more because I know some of my energy is getting lost through the Zoom, right? Through the video. So you got to find those mental things that you do that are going to get you into performance mode. Peak, uh, Tony Robbins calls it peak state. Um, Google that, Chris, write this down. Peak state, Tony Robbins. Go onto YouTube and just type in peak state, Tony Robbins. And there's probably a whole video where Tony Robbins explains how to get yourself in peak state. There's other things that you can do, like breathing techniques and stuff like that. Um, and trust me, guys, this stuff works. If you want to get good at sales, you need to be conscious of the energy that you bring to the table. Was that helpful, Chris? Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it, bro. Miles, calling on you, Miles. Where's Miles at? Uh, he just stepped out for a bit. Okay. Uh, who wrote posting on social media, posting more on social media? Who wrote that? All right, Teddy, tell me more about that. Why? Uh, I find it, I find it, um, it, it slips through the crack. Um, I, I forget to post on social media and post on the stories and stuff like that. Why do you think you forget to do that? 
is, is probably not on my calendar. Okay. And why else do you think you forget to do that? So like if I so if I was gonna foundation inspector out there. How comfortable are you posting on social media? Where he expects it. I, I'm comfortable. Like, I don't, I don't really. A scale of one to 10. Because like, I, I get caught up and then I forget. I'm like, oh, like, I'll just do it later. And then I forget. Yeah. Okay. Um, on a scale of 10, though, how comfortable are you posting? Like, just right now, picking up your phone and just doing a, a live, like an Instagram live and talking to everyone live right now. How, how comfortable are you with that? Maybe like a seven, eight, depending on if I have something to talk about. Okay. Recommend. How comfortable are you coming up with stuff to talk about? Oh, that that's that's a little bit more. Uh, I'm I'm not that comfortable thinking of stuff to talk about. Okay, scale of one to ten. Right, four or five. Okay, four or five. Um, why do you think it's important to post on social media, or do you think it's important, or why do you think it's important? Okay, I think it's important because it, it definitely stays top of mind and. Um, you can connect your clients that you meet on uh, your consoles and you can be like, like, like you said, like you can send out the video below. I connected my social media link and it, it, it brings a, so another level friend, of status that you're a, a somewhat official. Yeah. You're building your brand. You're building your credibility. Okay. I'm asking you these questions like this because I want, I want us to go deeper with it. Right. So why is it important to build your status or build your brand or build your credibility? Um, it, it, it um brings out it shows your sois that you're you're a, like you're official like you're, you're you're staying top of mind you're you're doing it you're a you're a what rob calls an influencer okay so it creates influence right you're able to influence what people think of you right by posting on social media now let me ask you another question for those that those of you guys struggle, what do you what do you think will happen to your business if you don't take social media seriously? Yeah, you won't be top of mind. You won't be top of mind. What do you think will happen to your potential or the results that you could have gotten? Teddy, I think you're leaving money on the table. Okay. How important is it for you to not leave money on the table? Very important. On a scale of one to 10, how important is it? That's, that's a 10. Okay. So you guys see what I'm doing, right? I'm going deeper with this, right? Because sometimes okay, cool. sometimes what it is, is, is either it's not a priority, right? Because we do what our priorities are. Whatever is a priority to you is the things that you do. So everyone pull out your calendar. Look at your calendar today. Everyone have a calendar on their phone or pull it up. Or if you just know off the bat what's in your calendar. Whatever is in your calendar that you put and typed in there and you know you're going to make that happen those are your priorities right if it's like hey wake up go to the gym or show up to the office at nine or uh, walk my dog or or you know go pick up my kid from school or whatever it might be whatever i put in there that's a priority to me right you you do what your priorities are whatever you did all day yesterday on sunday those were your priorities, right? So sometimes we haven't made it a priority or we haven't decided that it was a big enough priority, right? Therefore, it's not in our calendar because Teddy, the, it's a real simple thing, right? It's just, you gotta, you gotta really think about what your priorities are, right? If we just went through a series of questions where you told me that you're comfortable on social media, uh, it's a 10, out of a scale of one to 10, it's important because you don't want to leave money on the table. Um, you're not going to excel in your business as you could have if you uh, if you actually do social media and take it seriously. So you just explain that it's 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 actually a priority, right? Yes. But your actions are not in line with that, right? You haven't put it in your calendar. You haven't made it a part of your day, a part of your process. So therefore, there's a there's an inconsistency, right? You're saying this, but then your actions are doing this, right? And it's misaligned. So I think number one, my advice to you, Teddy, and anybody else is you need to really ask yourself internally, am I in line? Am I like doing my priorities, right? Is it really a priority to me for me to for me to do this? Um, and if it is, then what should I be doing to make sure that I don't slip through the cracks?
Should I be setting a reminder on my phone? Should I be having a checklist that I follow that I have to check off all these things by the end of the day before the day is over? I know for me, like I work good off checklists. Like if I'm going to start the day, I'll have like a checklist and there's like my top five things that I write down that need to happen today. And that's how I start my morning. I bust it out, I have my checklist, and then I just check them off. And one of those on there is post on social media. So I think Teddy, I don't, I don't think it's, it's not that you don't know how to post. Um, you said you're not good at coming up with topics like a four or five, but I think you know where to figure out topics, right? Like Teddy, if I said, come up with a topic, can you go figure that out? Yeah. Okay. You could do a search on Google, like, you know, hot top, hot real estate topics in 2023, right? Uh, most commonly asked buyer questions, most commonly asked seller questions. You can easily Google that and you'll come up with hundreds of topics. I post topics all the time in Slack for you guys to just use those and post those. So topics nowadays, guys, topics is not an excuse no more. There's, there's no longer an excuse of, I don't know what to post. Because if you see a good post on social media, you could just copy it, just copy it and do the same thing and just do it in your own words. You no longer have to be the inventor of topics, right? So I want everyone put, give me a thumbs up if you agree. You no longer have to come up with your own topics. You can just go rip someone else's topic and just steal it and then recreate it in your own words, give it your own twist, your own opinion. And that topic is yours, right? No one... No one comes up with their own topics no more. They're all just recreated, reproduced, and, and recycled, right? So I think, Teddy, for you and for anybody else struggling with social media, if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. If it's not on your checklist of what you do every day, it doesn't exist. If you don't make it a priority, it's not a priority, right? Um, so I, I would just... So you got do what you got to do, man, to make sure that you don't ever forget that you have to post on social media. This is an extreme example that I'm going to tell you, right? Is this, is this extreme? This is just for, for coaching purposes. If someone was to put a gun to your head right now, Teddy, and said, if I don't see a video once a day from you, everyone you love is going to get shot. Okay. Is, is March, that's like a whole year out. Is, is there like is there a down Would you make it happen? I can make it happen. <laughs> or some people might get shot. Just because, yeah, yes. Some people might get shot, you know. I don't know. I can make it happen. Some people might, we might lose a few people here and there. Uh, but do you, get, do you get what I'm trying to say, Teddy? Yes. All right. So when's your next video going to come out? Uh, today. Okay, who's recording your video? What do you mean? Me. Okay, great. That's the other thing too, right? Is sometimes, sometimes we think that we gotta like have DJ recorded for us. It has to be like super high production. It doesn't. If you have an iPhone, you have a video camera right here in front of you, right? Now, yeah, if you schedule some time with DJ and you want to do something a little more higher produced, then do those once in a while. But 90% of your videos would just be you picking up your phone and saying, hey, what's up, guys? It's Teddy. I wanted to tell you this topic, right? I wanted to chat about you, about, you know, talk to you about this. I want to tell you about this new tip. I want to tell you about this new thing we got going on. Those should be 90% of your videos. Short, sweet, and informative, right? And just do that several times per week put it on your calendar got it and um and guys if you tag me on any of your social media content i'm gonna reshare your stuff so just fyi so when you do it tag me on it i always reshare your guys' stuff because i want more people to see it i want some people that follow me to start following you i want people to see what our team is up to i want people to um contact you right if they have a question I, I'm going to shout you out. And we're going to collab on that, on that end. So Teddy, I need to see a video from you by the end of the day today no, or uh, in make-believe land. Some people are going to get shot. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. What's your video going to be about today? Um, uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, so you got... Right now, unmute yourself. You got two minutes to come up with a topic and post it in the chat. 
Let's go. Let's go. Take some action. All right. Let's see who else we got. We're almost done, guys. Uh, Francisco. Have a good combo, then get ghosted following up. All right. What do you mean? Yeah. So um, sometimes I'll have like a good conversation from the people I'll call from the pond. Um, I'll, I've been getting a few people that seems like they're currently actively looking that they have a pre-approval letter and everything. Um, and I was sending like some homes. They would like thank me for it. And then after a while, like I'll continue to follow up. But then all of a sudden I would just like lose them. Uh, and I'm not too sure whether, it, I know some people tell me like, uh, don't assume that they have an agent. I just figure like, you know, if I'm just there to like offer my help, um, potentially go show them a house and meet them in person. That's like my goal. But um, yeah, it, it also has to do probably with uh, my whole organizing system. Uh, sometimes I go back on a weekly basis to the Firepoint to go back to my leads. And then I noticed that like I had to follow up with someone, but uh, I didn't do so. And then I'll follow up eventually. But then again, I, I won't hear anything. So I'm not too sure whether I am uh, taking like a long pause to like follow up or like how often do I need to be checking up on them? Okay. That's, those are good stuff, man. That Those are good questions to ask. And I know a lot of people struggle with the same thing. So those are two different points that we're going to cover. Number one is your follow-up frequency, right? And then number two is going to be you're sending them homes. They say thank you, but then they don't respond. So you're not sure if they have an agent or what, what have you, right? So they're two different things. So let's talk about your follow-up frequency first. Yeah. If someone tells you they're looking to buy a home in the next month, in the next 30 days, they want to buy a home, how often should you be following up with them? Uh, every day, I want to say. Yeah. Every day, every couple of days, you know, every one or two days, right? And the goal should be what? To find them the right home. Uh, not to find them the right home. That's not the goal. I mean, well, so they could work with this and put an offer on the place. The goal should be to get in front of them, oh, okay. get in front of them to go show them a home, get in front of them so that you can build some more rapport, right? Because finding them the right home is going to be a process, right? That's going to be a process of showing multiple homes, figuring out what the criteria is, and eventually you find the right one. But your goal, if someone says they're looking to buy in the next 30 days, your goal is to get in front of that person live one face to face as soon as possible, right? Because you can have the most influence, you can build the most rapport in person, you can laugh with them, you can, you know, talk to them more, you can show them a home like we did our training on, on Friday, where you go show them homes, you build rapport, you connect with them, even if that's not the right home, you build rapport and you gain some trust from them. So if someone if someone uh, says they want to buy a home in the next 30 days, every time you call them, you, your goal is try to get in front of them, whether it's to meet them at a property, whether it's to meet them at, in the office to talk more about the home buying process, whether, whether it's to jump on a Zoom, your goal is to get in front of them where you can have like a live conversation face-to-face -face or virtually face-to-face, -face, all right? Um, and showing them a home and actually being physically in front of them is probably going to be even better, right? Because then you have a chance to meet their family, meet the kids, talk to the wife, talk to the husband, all that stuff. So I, so we established that, right? If they want to buy a home in the next 30 days, you need to be blowing them up, calling them, showing that persistence and saying, hey, when can we meet? Hey, when, when can we go take a look at a home? Hey, I have this home I really want to show you. Hey, I think it would make sense for us to jump on a call. Hey, here's what I recommend. You know, you're trying to get that appointment to meet them, all right? Got it. Now, if they're if they're more than 30 days out, they're like a few months out, then you might be checking in with them on a weekly basis. If they're like six months or more out, you might be checking in with them on a monthly basis until that time frame gets to 30 days, then you're calling them really more often, right? Yeah. So the longer they are, the more spaced out, the shorter they are in their time frame, the more frequent you got to call, call right. and follow up. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is going to be your method of follow-up, right? How are you following up with these guys so that you create some value, some urgency, and you, you get them to want to call you back or get them to want to meet you? 
I gave this tip to Dewey last week, and I think we did this, we did a training last week on this, and you guys may have forgotten. Definitely. But when you're following up with people, you don't want to be a person that just sends them property, right? Because remember, they can go on to Zillow and find property. They can go on to Redfin and find property. If you're just sending them a list of homes and saying, hey, let me know if you like any of these, what's stopping them from like, if they already know the address, if they already know everything, what's stopping them from calling another agent or calling the listing agent directly or working with someone else that they're already talking to, right? So you got to create exclusivity on some of these things, right? You got to create urgency. You don't want to put, you don't want to give them all the info because then they might not hit you back up, right? So what I would do is if I know someone is looking to buy a home in the next 30 days, I know they want a three bedroom, two bath. I know they want a, a property in a certain neighborhood. I would go on there and I would search for a specific home. I would look through the MLS. I would look through the homes. I would identify two or three homes that I think they're going to like. And when I call them, I would say, hey, I found two homes that match your criteria. I think you probably would like these. I think you would probably want to check them out. Um, you know, they're three bed, two bath, you know, and I would find, find something that's going to be valuable to them. This one just lowered their price or this one's been sitting on the market and we can probably negotiate a good price. You got to find like an attention grabber. What's going to get their attention? It, it could either be a new home. It could be a lower price. It could be the properties, you know, the price is negotiable. It could be it's an off market property or something that's going to make it beneficial for them to call you instead of just going online and looking at that property. Right. Perfect. You got to find the angle. You got to, you got to create that, that bait that's going to get them to want to talk to you. Right. right. And then you want to push for the appointment. Hey, you have some time to go take a look today or this weekend, or do you have some time to jump on a, uh, a live you know, a Zoom, or do you have some time to meet me at Starbucks and we can talk a little bit more and I'll, I'll bring the properties and we'll talk a little bit more. But I want to show you these before someone else jumps on them. Right. And if the client says, well, just send me the address to send me the stuff, just say, hey, I'd love to just send them to you. But that's not the way we typically work. We want to make sure we have a custom approach. We want to have a custom experience for you. So I, I really want to connect with you and show you these because they're kind of exclusive. And then I also want to find out a little bit more about you so that we can help get you what you want as quickly as possible. All right. So don't, don't just be the nice guy of, Hey, how's it going? Like customer service guy. You have to be the salesperson that uses the, the bait and you dangle the bait in front of them. All right. So Francisco, let's role play this real quick. Uh, you're calling me and you, you already, you spent some time, you picked out two properties one of them just lowered their price. One of them's been on the market and you're calling me to, to tell me the exciting news and why, you know, why we should meet to talk about these. Perfect. Uh, ring, ring. Hey, hello. Hello, Enrique. Hey, uh, hey, who's this? Hey, Enrique, Francisco here. Uh, we've been chatting a few while back um, about like you uh, uh, purchasing property. How's everything going? Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Francisco. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for calling. You know, yeah, we're kind of just still looking, you know, we haven't found the right property. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this, this is the reason for my call because uh, actually I came across two properties that uh, I believe you're actually going to like um, one of them just like lowered the price uh, by quite a bit and it's right under your criteria. And there's another property as well. That's been sitting for a while that I came across um, and I really would love to show you. Do you have any time this week so we could possibly go see it in person? Um, well, yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Can you just send me the properties? Just send them, send me the addresses and I'll let you know if I'm, you know, send me some stuff and I'll let you know. Yeah, definitely. I could definitely uh, send you the addresses, um, but I did want to talk to you more about like the exclusivity of the properties. Um, there's some really interesting features that uh, may not be posted on the pictures um, that I definitely wanted to show you as well as uh, maybe give you a little bit more info about the place once we're there. Um, so yeah, like um, I would really love to like meet you Enrique in person though. We could go a little bit more about the, these de details that I'm telling you about. Okay. Yeah. So you can't just send them to me. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll send them to you. Um, but uh, just keep keep in mind that uh, I would hey, I would like right to. Yeah, stop right there. Um, tell me you can't send them to me, right? But tell me in a nice okay. way. Hey, I would love. This is what you say. I would love to just send them to you, but I don't. I want to make sure that I'm helping you find exactly what you need. Okay. Right. Say because I don't want. Say we don't want to just be like Zillow, where you could just see a bunch of homes. We do more of a custom approach to find you the exact home that you're looking for. That is what you want, right, Enrique? Right. And then say so. Here's what we should. Here's what I recommend. Right. Then you go to the. Here's what I recommend speech. Let's jump on a Zoom call or let's meet in person or let's meet at Starbucks or you can come to my office or let's jump on a Zoom and I can show you all the information about these properties and I can we can figure out a little bit more about what your criteria is so we can help you get into a property as soon as possible, right? Do you have some time in the morning or the afternoon? Okay. So you see how like you told me I would love to send them to you, but the way I work is this. This is how I work, mm. Right. So you're telling me you're not going to send them to me, but you're telling me in a nice way, but you're backing it up with some value, right? Gotcha. So, so Francisco, can you just, uh, yeah, send me those properties and then I can get back to you? Yeah, I would love to send them to you, Enrique, but the way we work is uh, we like to take a more custom approach into finding the right property for our clients. So because of that, I would really love to like meet you either in person at the property, you could go to a Starbucks, or hop on a Zoom link uh, meeting. That way we could go over a little bit more details as to like what exactly you're looking for at home. How does that sound? Okay, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I guess I could meet you. Um, can we do like on, on Zoom? Is that is that okay? Yeah, definitely. I definitely recommend that. Um, do you have some time this week? I have an, I have an opening actually tomorrow at uh, 3 and 5 p.m. Yeah, 3 p.m. works. Perfect. Oh, okay. tomorrow. Stop right there. All right. Good job, bro. Give it up for Francisco, guys. Those of you guys listening in. Francisco, was that different from how you've been doing it? Yeah, definitely. What's the uh, difference? Uh, pretty much like, like you said, going in for like the kill of like meeting them in person to get a more better idea. Typically what I have been doing is like, just call them up like, hey, has there been any home? Uh, any houses that like caught your attention and I just leave it at that like you say play like the nice guy like no worries like you know I'll send you some more but like uh I suppose like yeah like grab them like hey listen like you know we should sit down um or or like you said send them a property that like fits in right perfectly their criteria that we they could go check it out in person with me yep so I want you guys to all take some a takeaway from this right in sales, nice guys don't, nice guys finish last in sales, right? Because it's sales. The goal is to push for an appointment. That doesn't mean you're rude. That doesn't mean you're unprofessional. That doesn't mean you don't act, you know, nice with clients. But what I mean by that is if you just kind of like act like stand around waiting for them to, you know, to kind of say, hey, Francisco, I like this house. Can you show it to me? That's not the way it works. Because remember, if they're talking to you, they're also talking to Zillow. They're also talking to Redfin. They're also getting properties from them. You, you can't be passive. You have to take the ball and you have to run with it, right? You have to show them the way you're going to do it because they're looking for someone to lead them. You can't just be the nice guy and say, hey, did you see anything you liked? Let me know. You actually have to do the work and find something that you think they'll like. Now, does that mean they're going to like that property 100%? No. You may go over there and you may find out that they don't like that property, but you just got to meet with them. Now you get to take the conversation further. Now you get to figure out what it is they like, what they don't like. And now you can say, okay, great. I'm going to find you something that has the fourth bedroom that you want. I'm going to find you something that's a little bit more remodeled because I understand this may not be what you're looking for. Now, do you have some time to go see homes again on Saturday? I'll have, I'll have a couple more properties for you. And now you're pushing it forward versus just saying, hey, it's Francisco, just checking in. Just wanted to see if you're still looking to buy. How's your home search coming along? It's almost like you're wait, you're hoping for them to say, hey, Francisco, I'm glad you called me. There's a home I want to see right now. Can you please write the offer? Right? That's not the way it works. It's the opposite way. Hey, it's Francisco. Yeah. Hey, I'm just calling some really good news. I actually found two properties that I think you're going to be interested in. Remember last time we talked, 
I know you wanted a three bedroom, two bath. This home just lowered their price. And I think it might be a good opportunity. Do you have five minutes or 10 minutes for us to jump on a Zoom? Or can you come in my office or could I maybe even meet you, you know, at Starbucks or meet you at the property and we can show it to you? So the difference is like the other way, you were just waiting for them to tell you, like come to you. This way you're saying like, hey, I got something. I'm coming to you. We're going to take it from there. You see the big difference? Give me a thumbs up, you guys watching, because I saw a lot of screens turn off. I want to make sure like this is this is gold right here, guys. This will make a difference between you closing five homes a year or you closing 20 homes a year. This this right here, this little tactic, this is a huge difference maker, right? It sounds very simple, but no one on this call is doing this at a high level, right? When you're able to do this at a high level and know how to dangle a carrot and use that in your benefit, that's how you become a freaking ninja salesperson. That's how you're able to convert more people to meet with you and not ghost you, right? That's how you get, you're, you'll be able to book a lot more appointments, right? Because you understand the foundation, right? It's create something that, that shows value or something that the client would want to know more about, right? Don't just give everything to them or don't just wait for them to come to you. You need to bring that, that value to the table and you need to do a little bit more work, right? You need to be a little bit more aggressive, push a little bit more and also have those things ready, right? Do your research before you call the client, especially if the client says they want to buy in 30 days. It's worth your time to spend the extra five, 10 minutes to look at a couple properties because that could be a sale right there where you make you know, $10,000, $20,000 on a sale, right? Um, all right, guys, I think we're coming up on time. I know we got through most of those. So Teddy said he's posting about a buyer tip using crimemap.com to see whether they like the community. That's a great tip. Great tip, Teddy. I want to see that video. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Less than one minute. It's a short, simple thing. Um, some sort of call to action at the end. Hey, if you need help with any of this, you know, reach out to me. Love to chat with you. All right, guys, that's all we got today. Uh, thanks for showing up. Hopefully you guys got some value. Let me know if you need anything, guys. Community comes into the Let's go. There's